All right, welcome back. So in part two, I'm gonna show you how to create a hybrid runner show. Um, so as we covered in part one's video, um, you wanna make sure you have, a, you have a solid agenda draft and the details before we get going. So let's take a look at this pretend agenda here that I created. Um, so you can see, again, this is just for the simplicity of um, you know the demo here, but I just have a one day event um, but you can see I've got the times. That's something you want to look for again when you're thinking of should I even start the run a show. So we have all the times. We do have the session names. Um, we have our speakers, which is great. And um, our client is awesome because they even gave us like which room this is happening in, both in person and then virtually, whether you know it's a main stage or a breakout, stuff like that. So I would say I'm pretty much good to go um, to start this to start with this, um, the one thing I would want to ask, um, and I've already put in here is, you know, who are the remote presenters and who are the in-person presenters? So as I was filling this in, um, I kind of just put a note to myself here that Susie is remote. Um, and then we have Deborah and Betsy who are also remote. So this tells me that this entire, you know, section of the agenda is actually going to be fully remote, more of, you know, kind of like viewing like a, a webinar for the in-room attendees. Um, so now that we have this flushed out, let's take a look at the template itself. Um, so here's the exciting part. This is our show template. So I just want to go over this before we actually fill it out. So one thing I like to do, you know, just with the pandemic and everything, you can have such a bigger reach these days. So we at Meeting Tomorrow like to kind of start out having all main time zones um, in America. And then you can always, you know, hide the tabs that aren't relevant um, if the show is, you know, just in Pacific time or something like that. Um, the next column here is the webcast producer notes. So this is really good to have for your webcast producer to put in any technical cues that they want to. Um, normally, the you know project manager doesn't fill this out. Sometimes they do, or it can be kind of like a collaborative thing on a call. Um, the duration, of course, this is helpful just knowing how long each um, session is, the topic, that's the name of the session, your presenters, your content, and um, here, you know, it says hyperlink to folder. So again, it's really important if you're able to, to um, link directly if you have a slide deck versus just putting, you know, version five of the keynote um, and make sure that everyone is looking at the most updated version. Um, and then the notes. Um, that's something that I went over in the part one video. Again, it's just really helpful to have any extra things that might come up. Um, a good notes field is good to have here. Um, and so as you can see, as I was, uh, as I was scrolling up and down, um, I like to free stuff too. Just visually, it's easier to make sure you're all looking at the same you know, column in a row. Um, so that's kind of just an overview of what the template is. So now let's get into actually filling this out. So again, kind of what I want to do first here, um, I just want to have my agenda up on one page, kind of filling it out, run a show on the next. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is when you look at the agenda, you can see this in, in Pacific time. So our company meeting tomorrow, we're headquartered out of central time. So I usually like to leave that column, but I don't need this one here. I'm going to completely hide it, get rid of stuff you don't need. Um, and then everything else, you know, I think is pretty good to go. So I've already set the time here. You can see to be eight o'clock which matches like the welcome remarks. Um, when I'm looking at this, we don't really care about the registration and the networking that's not applicable to us. Um, so the first thing I would wanna do is really just start with the topics. I think that's the easiest thing to do when you're building this out. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the welcome remarks. Um, after that, if I'm looking back at the agenda, you can see there's the opening keynote. After that, let's see, I'm just looking over at my next screen here. We've got the panel discussion. Um, and you know, let's say during the planning process, um, they told me after the panel discussion, they do wanna leave some time for some live Q&A. So even though we don't see live Q&A on here, like that's not something you'd see on a public agenda, um, I'm actually just gonna write live, nope, live Q&A. And my keyboard, okay, there we go. Um, followed by, let's see, we have a break here, and then we've got the concurrent breakout sessions, followed by lunch. Um, and for the purposes of this demo, I'm not going to fill out every little thing, but I would just continue going on through the end of the day to the closing remarks. And then eventually, you know, you're going to have a note that is very clear to your webcast producer and the team that everything is done. 
So we've got the topic. Um, the next thing I would probably do is the presenters. So I'm going to put in the first person who's opening the event, Clay Calloway. Um, opening keynote is going to be Nina Smith. Um, and then we've got our panel. So I'm going to put Rosita. Um, I'm going to put Ash. And I don't know if any of you are movie watchers, but if you haven't <laughs> discovered, I'm using the first names from the movie Sing, which is a really cute animated movie. Um, we've got Suki here. And if you remember looking at the um, agenda and in my pretend planning process, I was told she's one of the remote presenters. So I'm just going to make a note here so that it's a good reminder um, for me and my team that she actually will not physically be with the other panelists. Okay, so then we've got Portia. And then the last person we have is Johnny. And then I would fill in their last names too. Um, so since we know that these two things are together, what I'm actually going to do next is I'm going to merge these two cells here. So you can see that this is all part of the same group. Um, so a break and concurrent sessions and lunch, um, those don't really have presenters. So I'm going to just leave that blank for now. All right, so we've got our topics done, our presenters. Uh, the next thing I would look at is probably just filling in the time, so that's helpful. Um, so what's kind of nice in our template, if you you know decide to look at it, is we've got in um, formulas here. So really all that you have to do and what makes it so much easier, especially again, the longer these shows get, the more you're having to you know make changes, um, is that we have a template where you can just change the durations field and then it auto populates the correct time. So if we're going back again, here's the um, agenda. Uh, we can see that the, the welcome remarks is gonna be 15 minutes. So in here, I'm just gonna put 15 and you can see kind of our template here. We do hours by minutes by seconds. Um, you're gonna see that this already auto populated, which is awesome. Um, so I'm gonna keep going down. We've got 45 minutes and then an hour. So I'm gonna do 45 minutes and then I'm gonna do an hour for the panel. And then um, let's say, you know, we don't know how long we want the panel discussion to be and then how much time is designated at the end for live Q&A. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight this red. And again, using colors is helpful for me. Um, just something as a reminder in the planning process that I need to go back to and have a better idea of how long the client really wants to designate live Q&A for. Um, so then I'm going to go after that. Let's say that's done. We've got a 15 minute and then an hour. So we've got a 15 minute break. I'm going to add that in here. And then we've got concurrent sessions for an hour. Um, and then we have lunch and that's 45 minutes. So I'm going to go back here and put 45. And then again, you would kind of just follow line by line. But what you can see is, you know, it's good to double check your work. So you've got 8, 8, 15, 9. I'm kind of going back. Great. 8, 8, 15, 9, 10, 10, 15, 11, 10. Again, these are kind of the same thing. 10.15 um, and 11.15, which matches that. Okay, so we've got our core main things going on in here. Um, so now that you have that filled out, the next thing you want to do, and you'll you'll learn more of this as you do more events, or again, or maybe you're very experienced and you know exactly what to look for. Um, but the, th the thing I think of next is like the transitions, and again, thinking like the behind the scenes information that's helpful for your team. So for virtual events, you know, even though this is starting right at eight, the first thing I would think of is, you know, you want to allow your remote attendees to log in early and kind of trickle in as much as they can. Um, so I think a good standard here is like 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is actually insert a row. Again, you wouldn't see this on the public agenda, but I'm going to say, you know, we should actually open the virtual doors with a hold slide um, with, you know, maybe some nice music playing and like a 15 minute timer. Um, so this again is just indicating for my team like, hey, this is kind of like an action item we have to do before we start, but I'm going to color code it so it separates from like the bulk of the agenda. Um, so since we want to open doors early, the next thing that like triggers in my head is, okay, we need to change the time because we don't actually want to start going live at eight. Um, now we want to start going live, you know, 15 minutes before. So if I put 9.45 a.m., you can see everything shifts. Obviously this shifted and we're like, we still wanna start at eight. Um, so what you can do here is just kind of, you know, put again, 945, you can kind of copy over the formula here, color code it back to the color you want. And now I'm gonna put in um, 
15 minutes in my durations column. Um, oh, you know what? And then you might have to, sometimes, you know, you got to play with these formulas. Just make sure um, you can see here what it's doing basically is taking this cell. So the time plus the duration. And when you click enter, then again, it'll auto populate to the next row. Okay, great. So now I have that done. Um, and then the next thing that kind of, you know, my brain thinks of anyway is, yes, there's presenters back to back to back, but obviously there's got to be some type of transition here. So there's going to be a, a point where Clay is done, he's wrapping it up, and then he's handing it off to Mina. So virtually, that might look like a little strange. I would say in person, you know, again, before the pandemic, you're used to people's, you know, walk in, walk out music seeing someone walk off stage and the next person who maybe is already mic'd up walk on. But for virtual, that could be kind of awkward just seeing that like in through a screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create another row um, and I'm gonna kind of indicate what I want um, the production team to like push or what the attendees should be, see be seeing. So again, since this is hybrid, thinking it from both perspectives, which is important, I'm gonna put on site. And I'm going to put here, this is just a speaker reset. So really the on-site crew doesn't need to do anything, um, but it's just a good call of like what's happening in the transition. But then for my virtual team, so this is more for, you know, my webcast producer, I'm going to say um, hold slide with, um, you know, music or something. Um, and depending on how long the transition is, maybe music doesn't make sense. Um, so it's up to you. But for now, let's just say there, there's music. So what that does is, again, it's you don't have to create a time for this, I don't think. Um, you know, we're not trying to get as granular as like at 8, 14 and 30 seconds, you're going to put this up. It's really kind of the flow of how the presenters talk. And sometimes they go over time, sometimes they go under. Um, but what I'm going to do here still is, you know, use some color and help, again, visually just call out changes. So maybe I'm going to use all of like my speaker transition as like a blue color. So um, that's, again, kind of the next thing I would do at the next row. So you can see there's no break. So again, just copy and pasting this is pretty simple. Um, and so those are just some examples of like transitions you want to think through. Same thing for when you get down here, when the webcast ends, you don't want to just like end it abruptly, maybe putting up some type of like thank you slide. And again, with some music, then fading it out and then officially ending the webcast is what you want to do. Um, some things, again, depending just how complex, maybe you've got lower thirds, which um, are just, you know, the presenter's name, title, sometimes their company even, that you just want to display at the end. Um, I always recommend adding that stuff as separate rows um, instead of more columns. Because again, if you think about the tips, you know, and things that we talked about, it's, you know, your eyes really are reading down a run of show versus too much scrolling left to right. That's just easier for, for everybody. Um, so let's say, you know, in the keynote, she's got like a poll she wants or something. So in here, I would write, you know, launch poll number one at, you know, slide three. She gave us our deck in advance. We can see there was a poll. So again, this is just something that's kind of part of the keynote. You don't have to specify a specific time. But again, if you want to play with some color, just help you know, call things out like that, you know, and then there's another poll number two at slide six. Those are just examples. Um, so these are, again, are just different like transitions you can think of as you're um, building out the run of show. So I know that was a lot of information. Let's kind of take a look at a completely filled out run of show. Again, so here's what I was given. And let's say, you know, you're a day away and here's everything completely filled out. Um, and again, we'll have this for you guys. So if you want to reference like a full run of show, you're more than welcome to. So you can see here, I've got, again, things are opening early. Um, I even added stuff above, which is optional of like when the first round of presenters are coming and doing their tech check, you know, when we need to log on, stuff like that. Um, you know, welcome remarks, the title slides. These are things I talked about. Um, you can see, you know, maybe this is something your um, audio engineer filled in was who's actually gonna be on like lab one, lab two, when it's a bigger panel discussion. Um, stuff like, you know, putting in lighting could be helpful. Um, and again, depending if it's something that's like happening a lot, like I just put this as an example of the notes field, but let's say I had very specific lighting calls for each um, 
event. At that point, what I probably would have done was just inserted a new column to the left and just had a lighting column. Um, but again, just for the purposes, just kind of like showing you an example of different things. Here's an example of the, um, you know, showing a lower third, you know, when, when Suki is brought on since she's remote. Um, so those are just some examples. And then again, um, you can see I've kept, you know, the date and the general session all in one tab. Um, we did have three concurrent breakouts in this example, so I didn't fill anything in, but you can see I have breakout A, breakout B, breakout C, and I would just follow the same pattern, essentially. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how you would create a hybrid run a show. You know, I hope you found this step-by-step -step tutorial really helpful, um, and then you want to make sure you follow me to the next module to hear, um, you know, our top tricks, and again, what makes a run a show going from good to great. I'll see you over there.